Undergoing a battle that can't be won, you know, we, we have to move. We have no place to, to, to stay. All our land, our buildings and everything has been taken into the sea. My country is being tested by this hailstorm called Super Typhoon Haiyan. I struggle to find words even for the images that we see on the news coverage. To describe how I feel about the losses, I speak for the countless people who will no longer be able to speak for themselves after perishing from the storm. Mr. President, this process has been called a farce. It has been called an annual carbon-intensive gathering of useless frequent flyers. Can we ever attain the ultimate objective of the convention? जलवायु परिवर्तन जनित कारण सागर बांगने कबले पड़े जर अनेक सहय सम्पद ते सहय सम्पद बोलते कि कुतुबदिया अनेक लोक वास्तुपीठ हारिए कक्सबाजार जेलार मध्य अनेक उपजिल प्राय लक्षाधिक मानुष एन व्यस्त हुए विभिन्न भाव तरा बसबाज कर At those times when we are expecting bad weather, it's hot and then all of a sudden it's raining non-stop when we thought we were supposed to be having dry weather. And now it's kind of unpredictable, like we can no longer say like this is actually the dry season and this is when we have the rainy season. <laughs> You can see a lot, a lot of erosion has been taking place throughout here in Fongafale as well as in the outer uh, small islands. I also worry that my kids will grow up not knowing my grandkids or maybe great grandkids will forget their Tuvaluans or maybe not even talk Tuvaluan at all. If they go and move us all out, it's got to be the whole community moving to one place, not everybody just splitting up. Because if you really think about it, our village is almost like a family, you know? When something happens, everybody pulls together. We want to remain as Chishma. We don't want to disperse our community members to other larger communities. We want to remain together as a whole in a village, a new village, hopefully. A lot of kids are not sure how to deal with this because they're not sure if they're going to move away from their culture, you know, like hunting and doing their camping, boating, those kind of things that they do with their parents. They kind of panic, I think, because when they say the word move, they think they're going to be gone forever, you know, move away forever and not do the things they do here. Do you know why they're talking about relocating Shishma? Bad weather cual nos preocupa bastante porque hasta el momento hemos visto que ha, ha desaparecido como un 70% del glaciar, ¿no? Ahora no es, no hay agua. El tiempo está cambiando mucho y me doy de cuenta que antes el agua era en abundancia, todo era ya 
Pero así maravilla como el Che. El cual a nosotros nos preocupa mucho porque nosotros vivimos en este sector más que todo con el riego que el glaciar nos, nos proporciona, ¿no? Mis hijos no quieren vivir en aquí ya por falta de agua. Vivíamos como 60 familias. De las 60 familias, 40 familias ya se han ido a La Paz, a otras ciudades. Si no hay agua, la niñez no, realmente para nosotros es muy preocupante. Nos preguntamos nosotros mismos con qué van a vivir ellos. ¿no? La desaparición del glaciar para nosotros es como una muerte lenta. El agua es vida. ¿no? If uh, there is a part of the world where we have to help people to tackle climate change, this is definitely Africa. The sea started coming in, into the room. So we were compared to leave the place, abandon the place, and find somewhere else. I've lost my land. Everything depends on land. I've lost my land. I've lost relations who are displaced. Young men and women who should work here and make their life have all gone away. We have no place to, to, to stay. As you came to see, all our land, our buildings and everything has been taken into the sea. That's why we are looking for a place to go. There's nothing to eat in a drought. It's a famine, and there's no rain. If it doesn't rain, how can we grow any food? The land doesn't produce anything, so we're starving. We spotted a dead camel by the riverbed. We decided to eat it, and it made the children sick. They had severe diarrhea and started vomiting after eating the meat, but we still ate it. After 20 days of hardship, a truck arrived and offered to take us to the Kenyan border. Traditionally, rain every April and March in some places. Every August, we get rain. Every December, we get short rains. But nowadays, there is not that formula. You will only manage to get showers possibly two years. After two years, showers, not rain. We used to have drought every 10 years, then it became every five years. Now it's every two years. And if you don't have the rains at the beginning of the year or towards the end of one year, then you're going to have a problem into the next year. Uh, a lot of people now are being displaced in the refugee camps, not only because of conflict, but because of drought. They are coming to seek uh, assistance uh, in terms of water, food, uh, health care, and of course, uh, education for their children. Because of unpredictable climatic uh, condition, the changes in climate, more and more refugees are expected to arrive in this camp, in other camps of, uh, in the Horn of Africa, and, uh, and we are getting ready to, to, to be able to respond. Everybody is affected in that region. The herders are affected, the farmers have lost their crops. The situation is very bad. This is the third consecutive drought in a row. Uh, people have exhausted their coping mechanisms and they're really going through difficult situations. There was water shortages and crops weren't growing, so there's a mass migration from rural areas of Syria to the urban centers, which put more strain, you know, resources were scarce, which apparently did contribute to the conflict there today. 
When they were displaced, they went into cities. They started to rebel against the government. The government attacked them. They armed themselves. The international world armed the rebels. Today we have an ISIS. It began with lack of water. Imagine a world where climate change and a dwindling water supply may have helped fuel Syria's civil war. The Syrian situation is deteriorating by days. During the last 20 months, more than 25,000 people have already been killed. Millions of people have been displaced. We are seeing almost half a million refugees in the countries around Syria. Mm -hmm. 2.5 million people have been displaced here and there. And almost a half a million people are being hosted in four countries, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, and Turkey. Nearly one billion people go to bed hungry every night. Because of the long spell of drought or flood, desertification process. Africa is among the various parts of the world the most vulnerable one. On one side, the continent which, which has the lower emissions, but it is the continent where we can see the highest impacts. And this in turn generates other effects, social effects. At the end, it generates an enormous pressure to migration to Europe, uh, in particular, and to other countries, other parts of the world, but generates as well conflicts, and conflicts uh, generate degradation, and degradation generate pressures again to neighboring countries. The government so far is not looking at migration, rather government is thinking that all their interventions are targeted towards so that people don't move from the area. Don't think of migration as a threat. Think of migration as a one of the strategy that can help people to cope under a changed situation where climate stresses are making their lives difficult. We have to mobilize necessary fundings. Uh, we have to help many poor and vulnerable group of people because they do not have any capacity to adapt and mitigate the impact of this climate change. Even if we are able to ensure that we stay at the 2% limit in the, the production of greenhouse gases, the people will still be suffering because of these disasters. So there has to be ways for mitigation of our production of greenhouse gases. And on the other hand, there has to be measures for adaptation for the people, especially from the South. Therefore, finance, mechanisms for the climate should really address these issues, not based on loans, not based on corporate investment, but real grants that benefit the poor. The Kyoto Protocol does not cover the world's two largest emitters, the United States and China, and therefore cannot work. Under this administration, we have made an unprecedented commitment to reduce the growth of greenhouse gas emissions in a way that continues to grow our economy. The policy that was come up, that ultimately came out from the administration, was essentially a do-nothing policy. It was just sort of continue along with the same path we're on, which is a gradual improvement in the efficiency of energy use, but the emissions are still going up, so you still have the climate problem. Well, one big problem with the Kyoto Protocol is that essentially it's voluntary. And that's why the rich governments just gave targets that are not really enforceable, and therefore in the end nothing really happened, and in the end the whole problem is not resolved. Developing countries are only putting out a small fraction of the carbon that we are. 
So they're only a small part of the problem. They're using the energy they have to try and survive. Basically, we have too much money for us to take this action, but we expect the poor countries to do that. All these issues, global challenges, uh, should be addressed by global participation uh, through a collective uh, uh, political will. Do you think that the majority of the world's leaders are doing enough to combat climate change? Are they working I, with you? I'm sorry to say that <clears throat> the world leaders have not done enough. Mm -hmm. I have been trying to sound alarms that we cannot continue like this way. We cannot burn our way to prosperity without realizing the limit of planet Earth. The fact that climate has been turned into a business, the fact that the governments are captured by these businesses, and as a result, you are not able really to address the root causes of the climate crisis. These movements of the people from the South and the North should come together to ensure that there is a new protocol that is based on the people's welfare, that is based on the people's rights, on the rights for development for everyone, but at the same time, make sure that this protocol really addresses the corporate-driven nature of our system in the world today. There has to be an end to the thirst for super profits. And let's go to the more basic systems that, that ensure that you have enterprises of the people, such as their farms, small manufacturing, which are more sustainable. Nuestros abuelos nos han enseñado que nosotros somos parte de una gran familia. Y cuando hablamos de la gran familia, no solamente hablamos de los seres humanos, hablamos de las plantas, hablamos de los animales, hablamos que todos, todo lo que existe en el planeta formamos una gran familia. Hoy estamos hablando de pura crisis, de pura crisis, crisis energética, crisis financiera, crisis institucional, crisis alimentaria, cambio climático. Frente a esta situación de crisis, podemos, los indígenas, aportar con estos valores y buscar la negatividad.